everyone, welcome to Enhanced English. My name is Dawn and today we're going to talk about ways to make sure that you can be fluent in English so that you can get a better job or a promotion because your English is amazing. So let's get into it. So the first thing you want to do to make sure that your English is fluent enough for a new job or a new promotion is to really understand what fluency means. So fluency truly means that you can switch from your native language to English back and forth easily without problems, without thinking about what you need to say in English or how to say something properly. You're able to do so like that. It's easy, it's fast, you don't have to think about anything. That's what true fluency means that you don't have to ask questions anymore. You don't have to second guess yourself. You actually know what everything means. So you really need to make sure you understand what fluency is so that you can get to that goal. The next thing you can do is to really accept that English is very different from your native language. Even though English is part of some of the romantic languages like French and Spanish, if you're coming from those languages, it's kind of hard to accept that English is what it is. Because in your language, maybe you say different prepositions in your native language that are actually very different and have different rules in English. And so especially for Spanish speakers, I see this all the time in Peru, when people try to use what the preposition is in their language in Spanish, and they try to translate it directly in English, but it's not the same. It sounds really silly to us. And so that is one thing you really need to focus on is to accept that English is its own language. It has its own rules. You cannot just try to translate word for word of your own language into English. It's not going to work the same. All right. This next one might be a little bit more cultural, but regardless, it's very essential for fluent practice. And that would be your speaking, connotation, your mannerisms, your body language, how you speak in English. Because as English speakers, we talk a lot with our hands, especially myself. We use a lot of up and downs in our voice. Maybe we talk really high and then we'll talk really low. If we're trying to get a point across, then we start to enunciate more. People who speak English are very big actors. The way we speak as our native language is that we love to use our high voice, we love to use our low voice, we love to do all those things. And so to practice your fluency and especially to make a really good impression, especially for a new job, is to have those elements in your language and your fluency, being able to talk in a way that the people who are listening to you are engaged. They are grasped to you because they're like, wow, I love the way they speak. They speak clear. They speak musically, which is like talking up high, talking down low, all of those things. Those are all very important to come across as a very strong, fluent English speaker. Next thing is pronunciation making sure that you have very clear pronunciation because a lot of pronunciation, especially like in institutes, like around the world, especially if you're not being taught by a native English speaker, you miss out, that's a phrasal verb, but you miss out on really key pronunciation things. For example, the word to, native English speakers do not say to like a ooh sound. We actually say more like Huh. So I'm going to the store. So instead of saying I'm going to the store, I would say as a native English speaker, I'm going to the store. Tuh. I'm going to the store. So you have to be really aware of those little pronunciation things. You want to make sure that you listen very clearly to native English speakers, maybe on a podcast, maybe like on TV, maybe anywhere on YouTube for me. So what you can do is just to really take note of how people are pronouncing words, especially the vowels, A-E-I-O-U. Those are always a little bit different for native English speakers. We don't say eh, we say uh. We don't say ooh, we say uh. <laughs> so being able to be aware of those little pronunciation things will be very key 
to making sure your pronunciation is even better. The next thing is to don't be afraid. Do not be afraid of making mistakes. Mistakes happen all the time. You will never actually be good at English, whether that's pronunciation, whether that's grammar, whatever it is, whatever weak spot you have, you will never get better at it unless you understand what your weak spot is and you practice it. Make little goals for yourself. Maybe every single day, if you're like, okay, my pronunciation is terrible, okay, practice that 10 minutes every day because later on with that consistency, you're going to realize, wow, my English is so much better than it was, I don't know, a month ago. The next thing is to learn some slang. So slang words are very useful in everyday English, but also when you are in a business setting. People are using slang words all the time, like get the ball rolling, cut corners, those kinds of things. They are always being used in a business setting. So if you were able to talk to people, maybe it's a new manager, maybe it's someone you want to make a proposal to, if you're able to use those slang words, those idioms, those short expressions, and show that you know how to use those, then wow, that person who is maybe looking at you like, saying like, okay, is this our guy or not? They're going to say, okay, wow, this person really knows English and that is vital to our company. We love them for all of these reasons, but now they also have great English, so let's hire them, let's give them a promotion, whatever it is. It's really going to make a strong impression if you're able to use those little expressions, those slang words. The next thing is to not be afraid to relearn something. It's so common when you are learning something for the first time that you either completely forget what you were taught and you just come, go along with it, or you develop a bad habit of something that's actually not correct. And so what you need to do is unlearn and then relearn again. Do not be afraid to relearn something if it's necessary. Maybe your grammar is actually really terrible. Maybe you don't understand the difference between do and does, even though your English is pretty advanced, but until now you still mix up do and does. Even though that's a basic grammar rule, it's okay to look back and be like, oh wait, when do I use do and when do I use does? So that you know for sure when you go to use it again. And so do not be afraid to go ahead and learn something over again. Learn something new, but also something old because that's really going to make sure that you remove bad habits. All right, and this last thing I'm going to leave you with is really essential and you can use this for literally anything in your life and that would be to set specific goals i'm not talking about okay by this time next year i will have perfect english without any mistakes like nothing okay awesome that's great but that's the big picture you need to set aside little goals to get to that big goal Okay, and so if maybe pronunciation is your big goal, so maybe in six months from today, you will have perfect pronunciation. Okay, in six months, how can you break that down to have more specific goals? So maybe every day for two weeks, you take an online class. Maybe you do an exercise every night before you go to bed. Like there's little things that you can do that will be consistent every day so that when six months pass, boom, your goal is done, it is achieved. That is something you need to do. So look at the big picture, figure out exactly the specific time you want to finish it by, and then work backwards. Then figure out, okay, I need to think about this big picture and break it into little blocks, maybe into each month before, or maybe into each week before. And then, if, as long as you have a consistent plan and you are following that plan, then you will achieve your goal. So that is one thing that is very important. All right, and so these are my main tips for you to really get great at your fluency in English so that you are able to make more money this year, get a new job this year, get a promotion this year, whatever it is, you will get it as long as you follow these steps. All right, that's all for today. I'll see you next time.